FAA uh, certification or what they would call compliance audit uh, for ASTM standards, which is what light sport aircraft are made with. Uh, that's what I focused on. I did do a type certification and a production certificate for China, actually, of all things, for CREB. Um, because to get into Chinese market, that's what you needed. Um, and so the FAA process is that you have to comply with the ASTM standards. And each company is at a different level of compliance. Um, and compliance is self-compliance, except FAA can come in and audit you. And in 2012 to 2015, FAA was pretty much going and auditing everybody who was saying we are bringing a new model in. Uh, so CRE was one of those. And the process was quite intense. It's very similar to how you would do a simplified criteria type certification and production certificate. In fact, FAA focuses on production certificate side of things, production system, QA system, a lot more in the audit than they do the type side or the design side. Um, because the people who are auditing, the auditing team is audits production uh, certificate holders. and. Um, so they do understand that there's a difference between LSA and type certificated and production certificated aircraft, but the basics are pretty much the same. Uh, so your system still has to be in place. You still cover the basics. There are certain ease of requirements, but you could be, you could take it to the level where you could get actually a part 23 uh, production certificate uh, like CRE was probably at that level when I left there in 2013 um, because it had to comply not only with ASTM standards and FAA uh, audit but also with the Chinese CAAC audits which was a production certificate. So the difference wasn't really a whole lot to me in terms of what systems and what techniques and what processes had to be in place. Well. I should have probably charged more <laughs> because there are very few handful of people who are doing that in the US for companies and uh, you know when you uh, in in the type certificated world there's a DER designated engineering representative who signs off on many many things so there will be a DER for structures DER for flight loads a DER for ground loads you know so there are all these different areas uh, DERs for electrical system so there's a bunch of DERs involved and they are quite expensive. Uh, when you hire somebody in the ASTM compliance world, you are paying one or two guys to do all of that. And so it, that's where the cost can cut down quite a lot because you don't need a DER for every single thing. You know, uh, usually DERs would specialize just in structures or just in flight loads calculations and so on. Um, and similarly in the production system as well, you have, uh, you know, you, you sometimes have to hire consultants to comply with what MIDO requires. MIDOs are on top of the manufacturers in that area and MIDOs essentially issue the production certificate. And uh, this is an interesting tidbit for um, a little bit of tangent. In the FAA certified world, if your type certificate costs you a dollar, the production certificate will cost you 10 to 20 dollars. So that's, that's the amount of money you spend um, on your production certificate. So, and that's where the main expenditure of production comes from. Uh, and people don't realize that. Uh, the ASTM standards do cut that down quite a lot. Uh, and that is why uh, Congress actually required FAA to use the same type of ASTM or self-compliant industry compliance uh, standards for replacing or making a alternate path to part 23 certification type certification and production certificate to cut down that cost that has become extremely expensive and prohibitive you know if you want to bring a new model for part 23 certified aircraft it, it's a ridiculous amount of money there is no business case to really bring it to market uh, unless you're doing business jets uh, or well business jets would be in a different part but um, so really it becomes very cumbersome so that's what FAA is trying to do now mandated by the Congress.